Class Act Sports welcomes former NFL running back, future Hall of Famer, Jerome Bettis, otherwise known as The Boss. Thanks for joining us tonight, JB. Uh, thanks for having me on. So uh, we're on the heels of the Super Bowl 45 between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, you're a longtime Steeler, uh, retired after your Super Bowl victory. What are you thinking going into this game uh, as uh, an alumni of the Pittsburgh Steelers? Well, you know, I think it's going to be a tough game. It's one of those games that uh, anybody can win. I, you know, I'm, I'm pulling for, obviously, the Steelers. But, uh, you know, it's one of those games where it could go either way. So it's going to be a tough game, but I'm excited to watch. Now, I see you rocking your, uh, your Notre Dame sweatshirt. They're looking to get some things back on track. Um, I, and I just uh, actually learned today, you didn't play football until high school. So what was that like for you to just step right in high school and then into Notre Dame? Well, for me, you know, I, I didn't start playing football thinking that I was going to Notre Dame or anything. I started in high school, and uh, the goal was just to try to get a scholarship to go to college anywhere. Uh, but as it turns out, I was pretty good, and um, things started to happen pretty fast. So it, it came out of nowhere, actually. Yeah, so, um, you know, switching gears a little bit, I don't know uh, how many people are – when people think Jerome Bettis, they just think Pittsburgh Steelers. But you started out, you are drafted by the Los Angeles Rams, and then you had a transition period from the L.A. Rams into the St. Louis Rams, uh, and then they wanted to put you at fullback and – you know, we know what that means. You obviously know you're a better running back than just being put at fullback and eventually winds up uh, going over to find your niche in Pittsburgh. Talk about what that transition was like for you. Well, you know, initially it was, it, it wasn't tough. It was, I thought it was a, a bonus because coming out of Notre Dame, I was a fullback, a true fullback. So when I went to the Rams in, in Los Angeles, I, I thought it was, you know, with just going as fullback, they wanted to move me to tailback which meant there was more responsibility, responsibility for me running the football. So as it turns out, uh, I came to realize pretty quickly that you made more money at tailback than you did at fullback. So when the St. Louis Rams wanted me to move me to fullback, I knew better. <laughs> so, and once you went over to Pittsburgh, did, you, did, you feel, uh, did it seem more like at home for you on the East Coast? Yeah, but I think it was more the system, the offense, the, the, the team. Uh, this was a football team that was used to big running backs going back all the way to the days of Franco Harris. So they were, they were comfortable with me and my size. So for me to step in and be productive, uh, it was just a, a bonus. And uh, actually, it turned out to be uh, a sweet trade for them. But my career took off as well. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, switching gears, going back to the Super Bowl a little bit, you won the Super Bowl 2006 in your home city of Detroit. And uh, yeah, I just want you to touch on, did, what was that like for you that year? You were thinking about retiring. You, you were convinced to come back. You convinced yourself to come back one more year. And then you finally go out on top and are able to retire as a Super Bowl champ. You know, it was, it was one of those years that, it wasn't a magical year because the year was pretty frustrating. We, we, you know, the year before we went 15 to one during the regular season. We were the number one seed in the playoffs, uh, and we lost in the AFC Championship game. Uh, so the next year we came out and we really underperformed all year long to the point where, with three games left, we had to win them all in order to have a chance to go to the playoffs. Uh, and you know, as you know, we won them all. We ended up being the sixth seed in the playoffs, and we had to go on the road. But what it did was it made us stronger, and it made us more of a complete football team because we had to go on the road to win, which is the hardest thing to do in the NFL. So by the time we got to the Super Bowl, we were pretty battle-tested. But more importantly, we had come together as a team, and as a unit, and was committed to winning a championship. So we went to Detroit, my hometown, and, and – uh, we got it done. We left there with a championship. You talk about going on the road uh, and being successful on the road. Why is it today that the teams seem to be more successful or more apt to go on further in the playoffs as five and six seeds, a la the New York Giants a couple of years ago, now the Green Bay Packers, and teams are having more success on the road in the playoffs? 
I think now because you have more parity in the NFL. In years past, the 56th seed really wasn't that competitive in the sense of not being able to compete with the number one, number two seed. Well, now that's changed. So now you have six teams in the playoffs all capable of winning a championship. So it makes everyone's job a lot harder. So those six seeds, you can't take them lightly or else you'll be watching them uh, have a chance to win a championship. And it always takes a hot quarterback. When you got a hot quarterback, anything can happen. But you got two hot quarterbacks right now in Big Ben Roethlisberger and Aaron Rodgers. Um, what do you see in both of these quarterbacks that enables them to be elite top five quarterbacks in the NFL right now? Well, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, he has, he has a big arm. Uh, he has a great offense, great group of wide receivers. But he has the ability to, to uh, throw the football down the field. He's really accurate. He's got great uh, movement in the pocket. But he also can run really well outside the pocket. So, I mean, he's, be, he's going to a, a great quarterback. And I think Ben Roethlisberger, he just has that it that you want to have your quarterback, uh, that, that you, want, you want your quarterback to have. He, just, he knows how to win. He's a winner. Uh, and he never quits. I mean, the game is never over until it's zeros on the board. And uh, that's, what I think, one of his biggest strengths. Uh, Jerome, absolutely. Talking about uh, a little bit more about your Super Bowl run, was your Super Bowl ritual the week of, even the day of, was that ritual a little bit different than it had been uh, in other games? No, I had the same ritual. I did everything the same. Although the times uh, were, were different because obviously it was the Super Bowl uh, and there were some differences in time. But for the same part, I went out warmed up the same kind of way. Warmed up with the same guys, did the same exercises. I, I try to keep everything as similar as possible. Switching gears a bit, talking about yourself as a first round draft pick, 10th overall. I want you to touch on the rookie pay scale. What's your take on that? Does that need to be changed? I think it needs to be adjusted because what's happening is it's putting too much pressure on the football teams uh, and, you know, that has to pick a high draft pick because if that, if that quarterback or running back or, or defensive tackle doesn't succeed, he's, he's put the franchise in a bad position because they've had to invest so much money uh, in these uh, you know, top five, top ten picks. And so the, the problem comes in when a, when a player comes out of college and is automatically making what the top five players in, in the NFL are making there's a problem because you know, how can you pay, pay a rookie quarterback what, what you know, Brady is making or what Ben Roethlisberger is making, and he hasn't thrown a pass yet? I think there's a disparity there that needs to change. Uh, and I think they, they want to make the adjustments, but I just think it, it needs to happen. Now, uh, I, want to talk about, um, I want to talk about something funny that happened in your career, the, the, uh, the Lions game controversy, the heads-tails uh, controversy that I'm sure people are pretty familiar with. Heads, is it heads or is it tails? What was that like for you? And do you still laugh about that to this day? Yeah, it was frustrating because, you know, it was my first time playing back at home in Detroit, and uh, there was a controversy. The, the, the umpire thought I said heads, I said tails, and it got flipped around, and, and, it, and it became a problem. We ultimately lost that football game. So I mean, it was frustrating, but it is one of those moments that, that you, you never forget. And unfortunately, they run it all the time. And since that, they've come out with the, the Bettis rule, which means you have to declare before the quarter or, or before the coin is tossed in the air. So I'm just glad they made, it. They made, they made the change. Well, speaking of changes and a couple of rule changes, what's your thought on the new overtime rules? And, uh, you know, even though we hadn't seen it come into effect yet. I don't like the overtime rules. I don't think it's, it's the right thing to do. I think, uh, you know, this, this you know, game of ours was built on the idea that, you know, the best team is going to win. And if you get the ball, if you can't stop uh, your opponent, then you don't deserve to win. Uh, it's a situation where everybody knows 
what the dynamics are, and if the first team that scores wins. I mean, that's that's pretty simple. Now it's creating a problem because if if the you know the first team goes out and scores a field goal, and the second team goes out and scores a touchdown, then you know the, the second team I believe wins or whatever, and right. that shouldn't be the case. No, I hear you on that. The one thing that I think it helps or protects teams is from either uh, a run back to the, t to the opposing 20 or even a, a flag pass interference play and then a field goal with some anticlimactic end. But that's, those are definitely great points that you bring up there. Yeah, you, you know what, but I, I'll say this. I mean, the, the run back, you know, a kickoff, return back to the 20, that's your fault. Your special teams is part of the game. Right. And if they give up a big play, it's just like a quarterback – Giving up a big play to a wide receiver. You've got another guy on the field. You've got to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, and I think that's, a, that's an integral part of the game that you can't take away. And I think what they're doing is they're, they're taking it away and actually making a disadvantage for the team who wins the coin toss because they have to go first. Right, right. Um, obviously, this is pretty self-explanatory. speaks for itself. The boss. But who was the first to give you that nickname? Well, it, it developed when I was at college, when I was at Notre Dame. Somebody in the student, uh, student body newspaper uh, started calling me the bus, and it, and it really stuck. So when I left Notre Dame, it disappeared. But when I came back to uh, Western Pennsylvania, uh, back to the Steelers, that's when it, uh, it popped up, and it was uh, pretty useful. Jerome, do you ever reflect on that, that one game where you actually carried the ball five times for one yard but still accrued 18 points for your team, scoring three touchdowns? Yeah, no, that was a, it, it was one of those crazy stats uh, that you see uh, you know, on, the, on the, um, the box scores. But, no, I don't, I, I really don't think about it. It was a game we won. When people bring it up, uh, you know, I remember, but it's not one of the games that um, is pretty high on my memory list. Well, well, speaking of your accolades, you're a you're six-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro, Rookie of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year Award, a Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, as well as a Super Bowl champ, and now a Hall of Fame finalist. Uh, when you reflect on your career, out of all the accolades that we just mentioned, which stick out the most to you? Which are the most meaningful to you? Well, the one that sticks out the most is the Man of the Year Award because it goes to the person who, who's committed not only on the field but off the field in terms of uh, you know, the philanthropy that you're involved with, being able to help others, and just being you know, a significant force in your community. So I think of all the awards, that's the one that I, I covet and cherish the most because it's not just your, your skills on the football field. It's what you give back uh, to your community. And that's class act right there. And we like to focus on a class act things on and off the field as well. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to touch on your uh, on the bus foundation, things that you have going on off the field. Yeah, I've got my foundation. It's called the Bus Stop Tier Foundation. And, and what we do pretty much is, you know, we, we help underprivileged and at-risk kids. And, and we do a, a pretty good job in terms of the programs that we have. Uh, we have a cyber bus program that um, pretty much integrates kids into uh, the computer literacy aspect of, of computers, teaches them how to build a computer, use it, and then integrate it into their home uh, by us giving them a computer at the end of the program. So we've got some, some really good programs that we're involved in, uh, and we're really, really happy about it. Absolutely, Jerome. I'm sure you you were brought up the right way. Um, but when you when you uh, made it to the Pittsburgh Steelers, a coach that's a legendary coach, in my opinion, Bill Cowher. What did you learn most from a coach like Bill Cowher? Well, you know, I, I just I learned uh, you know how you win as a team. I mean, it's about the atmosphere and the environment that you create uh, as a coach for the for the players to flourish. And I think that's one thing that uh, he created. A lot of people thought that he was this, this tiring guy spitting all over the place, just mean all the time. But when, when he, you know, we were together in practice, he created a great environment. And he wasn't a mean guy by any stretch of the imagination. And you just wanted to play for him because uh, you know, he was a great person, great coach, and he was a great leader of men. So it was, you know, that's one thing I'll, I'll never forget. You know, having watched him, understanding that the environment creates uh, a lot in terms of team sports. 
Well, do you see uh, Coach Cower going to be back in the league within the next year? Or do you think it's still going to take a little bit of time? Uh, you know, I just think it depends on what it depends on what team. Uh, yeah, I think he wants to go to the right team, so it's a situation where he, I think he wants to coach, but until he finds the right team, he's going to uh, you know enjoy the television work that he's doing. How about yourself? I'm sure you spent your family guy. You spent a lot of time with the family, but if you were given an opportunity to be a coach in the league, one way or the other, would you take it? Given the right opportunity, I don't think I want to. I want to be a coach. I would. I would consider you know some uh, management or some uh, you know general a general manager type opportunity. Uh, that's that's an area where I would. I think I would enjoy. I would flourish uh, just to be able to evaluate players and. and Build a team uh, with the right personnel. I think that's something I, I would want to do. Right. Uh, I, I, I want to do. Right. 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 In the Hall of Fame, 2011, a big time candidate. Uh, I know Victor Green's working with Class Act Sports, a big part of Class Act. I know you're in touch with Vic here and there. We look forward to sitting down with you when you do actually get inducted into the Hall. Uh, but what does that mean to you to be on the brink of going into the Hall of Fame? You know, it, it, it's a special uh, feeling just to be a finalist, to be one considered, uh, you know, in this class, to we'll be one of the 15 guys that have a, the chance to go into the Hall of Fame. It's uh, it's humbling. You know, it's it's one of those deals where if you don't get in, it doesn't mean um, that you weren't good enough or it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, they didn't know what they were doing. It just means that there were some other guys that were, uh, you know, just as good, they got the, yeah, they got the consideration. Uh, so you just have to, you know, look forward to next year and see what happens. I'm, I'm not a guy that can, that, that worries about things you can't control. I can't control the vote. All I can get control is what I did on the field, and hopefully uh, my body of work can, you know, stand up to the test of time. No doubt about it. No doubt. Your big body of work. Um, wrapping things up a little bit. Uh, Pittsburgh, Green Bay, I know who you're pulling for. Is this going to have to come down to Big Ben or Aaron Rodgers? Because I don't see that both running games being able to run on those types of defenses. Is it going to be who makes the least amount of mistakes? Is the defense going to win it? Or is it going to have to ultimately come down to the quarterbacks making plays? It always comes down to the quarterbacks uh, in this game. Uh, you know, Super Bowl is, is, is a matchup of the two best teams in their respective conferences. So that means um, you want to have the best team on the field. And usually, uh, the, the really, really good teams can stop. 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 The really, Super Bowl MVP, uh, Super Bowl predictions, future Hall of Famer. Thank you very much. From Class Act Sports, I'm Jared Ginsburg. That's Jerome Bettis. Uh, everybody out there, hey, thanks for, for watching me on Class Act Sports. This is Jerome Bettis saying, see you later. All right, boss. Thanks a lot, bro. We appreciate it. And Vic and I are definitely going to hold you to that Hall of Fame uh, sit-down once you get inducted. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, JP. See you, bud.